with the strike of a light boat. I just air it out and leave with the mic broke. The micro, I'm hard body like Tycho. Heavy metal Chevys with nitro. Addicted to the vapors of paper, hypnotic to the thirst. I'm pulling off criminal capers. I know the cocaine crackery stinks, but that's what it is. Surrounded by the khakis and mints. We move. Welcome back to Ratchet and Clank 3 of your Arsenal Developer Commentary. I am Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout. It's good and to be this back, is Tony. level one of Ratchet and Clank up your Arsenal. Something, something for us. Florana. Uh, it was Florana is the name Florana. of it. Florana. Yeah. Uh, done by me, Tony Garcia. Uh, all me. 100%. <laughs> even, uh, even the art, Tony? Even the art. I did it all. It was, I thought I thought it was Craig Goodman. I thought he had something to do with it. No, I mean he's. I mean I let him think he did, but <laughs> I mean really I did most of it. Well, that's amazing, Tony, because this is a beautiful level. It's really good, right? I mean, for for PlayStation Two, this is about as good as it gets. For a man that has no formal art training or artistic talent, for that matter, none at all. I think I did a pretty good job. Oh yeah, this this is gorgeous. I'm well well done, Tony. <laughs> this is also the level that introduces my favorite weapon, because I made it, the, the plasma, plasma whip. whip. Well, guess what we're spending our money on? That's right, you are. We're spending it on the blaster. Oh. Ah, that's a joke. Here's the plasma whip. Oh, sorry. Tell you, uh, why don't you tell a little bit about the plasma whip? Uh, well, we were... Uh, I'm. There's so much to talk about this level. I'm gonna. Ha I'm gonna hope we get through all of it because there's a lot for me to say about this level. Okay, so let's hold off on the plasma whip then. Let's until... hold off on the plasma whip because I got a lot of fun things to say about this level. And if I run out of things to say, I'll talk about the plasma whip. All right. Okay. And I can't afford the. Ah, oh, darn it. Oh well. Um. Uh, now I thought we had the buy all button in this game. Oh. Uh, it's. Ah. Huh. Oh, there yeah, it is. It's just max the max ammo. ammo. Okay. Yeah. 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 Derp. All right, keep going. So, also in this level, we feature two brand new crates, and I those two crates won me a case of beer from Insomniac's own Ted Price because he didn't believe I could do it, but I believed in myself. So, so if I remember correctly, uh, Ted approached you somehow and said, and we had a conversation. Ted. It was me, Moo, and Jared. We all uh, sat in the same pod uh, on this level. Me, Moo, Jared, and Ricardo. And poor Ricardo, that he had to sit in that pod with us. Uh, and we were just sitting around talking during pre-production of this game, and Moo had come up with the idea, or I think it was Moo, I'm gonna give Moo credit for the original idea, that we introduced some new crates into, into the game because it was the third game. We wanted to try to do some new stuff. Uh, and so we said, why don't we just brainstorm some ideas for new crates? And Ted caught us having our conversation, trying to brainstorm some new ideas. And uh, we told him, hey, Ted, we want to do some new crates. And he says, we've been trying to come up with new crate ideas from the beginning. <laughs> and I think we've done everything that we can do with crates at this point. It is impossible to further extend right. the crate paradigm. Yeah, they, that's exactly that's exactly how he said it too. It was weird that he spoke so formally, <laughs> but yeah, that's exactly what he said. And uh, and we took him. I took him up on the challenge, and I said, "We're gonna do it." And he says, "If you can do it, I will buy you a case of beer." And, and that, that was all the motivation I needed to see this through to the bitter, bitter end. Well, that's pre the, that's pretty remarkable because Ted was not a big fan of drinking at the office. Oh, he was very much not a fan of drinking in the office. No drinking during lunch. No drinking in the office. That was not that was not allowed. You you did not do that. And I think it's a good rule. I mean, it's it's hard to fault him for a rule that you shouldn't be drinking while you're working. What? Come on. <laughs> I do my best work inebriated. And so, the two crates that we came up with in our infinite genius was the bolt multiplier crate, which we saw earlier. Yes, I used it without talking. That's right. And the inferno crate, which we would have seen had you not died because you're a terrible Ratchet and Clank player. But we'll see it soon. We will see it soon. And of course, I have to run back to the start and get some more ammo. Also, I hate those goblin guys <laughs> just please get them off screen as fast as possible because they because they are riddled with bugs oh okay i i understand 
I, I get what you're saying, Tony. Oh, thank God for the max out the ammo button. <laughs> oh, I can't believe we're actually... Uh, this is going to be half as painful as the last game, I think. I, I remember, we, we talked about how much Ted hates foot sliding. Cannot stand it. <laughs> Big pet peeve with Ted. Yes. Uh, those goblins, gigantic feet. Obviously, I'm I'm the one who's given the task of making them not foot slide. And, uh, dear God. And they're so still... They're still please just kill them. Right just please kill them. They're okay, I'll kill them right now. I, they're so horrible. They're so <laughs> bad. I'm. I hate these guys are, so much. Are you seeing lots of bugs just as you look at them right now? Those. I mean, the, uh, I'm really not happy with them. I'm just not. <laughs> right. I don't know why. I don't even know if I could have really done them better at the time. I'm just not happy with the way they turned out. No. I played this level again recently, uh, not for the podcast, just for, you know, for me. Uh-huh. And, uh, oh, it was so hard to <laughs> see those guys. I felt really bad. The, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, the boomerang that they throw had a lot of iteration done on it. Yeah. Oh, it's really dark for some reason. Yeah, I mean, we don't give the enemies, I mean, a boom we've never done a boomerang before. And, and uh, it, it's it's hard to read a boomerang as a player. Exactly, because it doesn't come straight at the player. It comes in an arc, and to get the player to read that that's gonna when it's gonna hit them is very difficult. Exactly, the player's not really sure what question you're asking. Him. And it's also, I mean, you also lose sight of it a lot, and so it has to have that big bright contrail on it, and even that just helps a bit. And so there's a lot to it in terms of making sure the player always sees where it is in the world, for one, right. and what its what its path is and where it's going to go. Because you can move out of the way, but, I mean, you have to know where it's going to, where it was aimed at to really get out of the way. Is that why, in general, they come up and melee attack you instead? No, I think we just wanted uh, some diversity. We didn't want them all to be ranged enemies. Got it. Uh, but rather than have a ranged and a different melee enemy, we just had the goblins, and that's always uh, that's always really hard to do because uh, it it's difficult to make the player understand which mode they're in. Yes, exactly. Uh, I uh, I remember when we were focus testing this level, we got a disc where the light on this ladder was broken, so the ladder was pitch black against the wall. <laughs> uh, and oh my god, it was so painful because the kids would run up here. And they were like, oh, I saw guys come in this way. I should be, what's going on? I am so lost. And then they'd run around for it. And we, we had to come up and say, look, there's a ladder over here. And this is the first ladder you use in the game, too. It's so mean. <laughs> oh, God. It's so dark. I, I don't know what's going on. So another little bit of trivia uh, about this level is this was the first level at Insomniac. At Insomniac as a company that used their brand new level editing tool that was being written as this game was being done. Phoenix. Phoenix. Now, are, and you, this, are, are you sure you want to talk about Phoenix without violating our don't talk yeah, about Yeah, I do. I think, I, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, this is, it's important, right? I mean, up until this point, all of Insomniac's tools had been built into Maya. Right. And Maya was basically the tools home for everything that they've done. And, and around this, this point in the company's history, they decided to put a more renewed focus on on tools and building more tools in house rather than being so dependent on Maya. Now, as a as a uh, independent developer, which Insomniac is, it really pays off to own your own tools and engine because it's it's kind of a uh, insurance policy, right? Like if uh, if Insomniac had ever you know fallen out with Sony for some reason they would still own the technology and they would still be able to make games with it. Right. So it's kind of a good investment. And so around this time, they decided it was it was really worth it, I mean, correctly, to put a, a larger focus on tools and building up more things in-house that we could greater customize and improve our tools chain. And, uh, and there's the Inferno crate. And uh, so around this time, we hired a, de a dedicated tools programmer uh, and he was in charge of making our new level editing tool that was developed as this was going on. And this level was our test bed for how our workflow was actually going to go. And uh, 
And that comes with a lot of pros and a lot of cons, as you can imagine. Because, uh, I mean, it's... <laughs> I'm, so I'm sorry, keep going. Uh, and, you know, so it was... There's a lot of good things in that whenever you had an idea of how to do something better, you had a chance to really try to make it better and try to handle all the other, other stuff. The downside, of course, is that it is a work-in-progress tool. Yes. And there's a lot of features that will not be there, you know, day one, and that you have to work around bugs and problems that come up. Right, like for example, uh, the memory management feature might not be there, and so the tool will crash every two hours. <laughs> for as a hypothetical, as yes, I, that, that is something that can happen. Of course, didn't happen. That happened on the next game, I think. Wait, no, that was just okay. Uh, I'm gonna tell this story uh, because it's hilarious. So Colin was the designer on this level. Uh -huh. And so he was the only person in the company who had to use uh, Phoenix at this point. Everyone else. Well, me and Colin, out. both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, sorry, he was. <laughs> yeah, you, you two, you two poor bastards. And, <laughs> uh, and so I, I had to go into this level for some reason. I think I was setting up the flying birds, and uh, uh, I noticed that when I left the level by clicking the little X, you know, for for Windows close, that it would save nothing, right? And so, uh, so I, I just said out loud, I was like, oh, in Phoenix, if you close it with the X, it doesn't save anything. And Colin, who was sitting next to me, just went, what? <laughs> and I'm like, what, did you, did you lose something? And he's like, I've been doing that all day. <laughs> and, and I started laughing so hard. It was just the look of absolute panic and despair on his face. It was sad because he lost his entire day's work, but... <laughs> I still laugh because he was so sad. Right, so that's one of the potential downsides of using <laughs> a brand new, a brand new untested tool. Yes, yes. But uh, generally speaking, you know, you want to run into bugs in the game software, not bugs in your tool software. And if you're this making a true. tool, you're running into both. Um, I think this was actually uh, stuff like that was what prompted the company to hire tools testers which we hadn't had up to that point. Like, right. Like Paul Hale, I think, at that point was a tools tester, right? Or was uh, he still in QA? I think he became, after this game, he became a tools tester, but I'm not exactly certain. Got it. And the, yeah, after this game, we made we made the entirety of Deadlocked in Phoenix, and like all the games after that were Phoenix until they upgraded to their next tool. Right. Um, I don't remember why it was called Phoenix. I think it had something to do with like, it being a, a new version of another tool that failed and so it was rising from the ashes or something. <laughs> okay, sure, I'll take that. That's the best I can offer you. You having a good time? I love that monkey. Scrunch? Again, the one-eyed monkey I think is a little borderline. <laughs> you think so? A little bit. I mean, there's another really bad borderline joke coming up. Oh, what was the really bad borderline joke? We'll get there. I okay. mean, we'll get to it. I'm certain. So the path of death, also, Jared Putman, uh, this was another one of his big features for the game. Uh, in addition to those big battlefields, he does these little obstacle course levels that we see a few times throughout the game. Uh, hopefully, I'm not going to make any promises, but hopefully... Uh, a guest on one of our future podcasts to help share his perspective. Oh, fuck on... these rocks. <laughs> Sorry. The, uh, uh, we're going to get very soon to the Ratchet and Clank 3 Up Your Arsenal Snow Beast Award winner. <laughs> uh, that's coming up very soon. The second annual Snow the Beast Award. The second annual Snow Beast Award winner. Uh, which actually caused a bit of controversy this time around because the winner was not me. <laughs> and the winner uh, probably was very was reluctant not as to accept the award. award. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe we can get him on the podcast too. Hopefully, we'll get him. Hopefully, we can get him to talk about his contribution and see if he still feels a little bit sore about it. Oh god! I love that fire effect. That is a great fire effect. I love that it has a point light attached to it. Like we never yeah. did that in Ratchet Two. It's expensive, man. It is expensive. I, I, if I remember correctly, you could only have four of those going at a time total in the whole game. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was not something we did lightly. 
Oh god. Yeah, this was our other big bolt grindy thing that we introduced into this into this game. And uh, I mean, I really liked him. I thought this was really interesting. The obstacle, like for Annihilation Nation and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a good idea. I think Colin designed all these. Yeah, I mean, I think Colin designed like most of this game. He had a lot to do on this game. I would say we were going to get Colin on, but he wouldn't do. No, it would be impossible. Now, tell us what you know about Doctor Nefarious. It's funny to see Colin. It's. I mean, I'm sure if you listen to this, you'll be like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm never." Gonna. <laughs> so I'm not. I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here. <laughs> he brought. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Quirk has a beard. I forgot. This was my uh, boss fight. Uh, I want to say my first big boss fight that I ever did. Oh, right. But I'm probably wrong. Uh, was this a good boss fight? Do you remember? Uh, it's a short boss fight. Uh, I don't know what that means. Maybe that maybe that means it's good. Maybe that means it's bad. I, I don't know. I suppose if I'm glad it's short, then it's good. And if I'm ah oh, fuck that. <laughs> when you get that kind of reaction, you know it's yeah. good, right? <laughs> like fuck you, boss. I hate you and everything you stand for. Yeah, there's not a lot going on in this boss fight. It's very simple. I mean, you you can't open up with a hugely complicated boss fight. He's he feels mini boshish, yeah. Yeah. Oh fuck that boomerang. Oh. Uh, the fact that you died, that means it's a good boss fight. You know what? That I'm going to call that the bullshit orang. <laughs> you know what? I just got act tuned. Those uh those crates weren't around the first time. Yeah, they were. They were in the oh, cutscene. Yeah? Okay. yeah, they were. You just don't pay attention. I don't I, you know what? I'm sorry. Tony, you probably put a lot of hard work into making those crates appear. So, oh, <laughs> this was actually kind of funny. Uh, so, those crate spawners were written by Moo uh, for one of the levels that we're about to come up to. And he, the, when he first wrote the crate spawners, he didn't expect them to be reused in other levels of course not because what was why would you and uh i needed to put crate spawners in this level so i was like oh moo already wrote them i'm just gonna take them and i'm just gonna add some little extra bits of code so they do what i want them to do in my <laughs> and uh so i took his crate spawner and i in in the code i wrote like if level equals you know two and this was numbered level two in our production right we did them out of order uh, yeah, and so I was like, if level is two, do my special behavior. And this was like our first set of levels that we were doing in the game, and I was doing this. And Moo saw I wrote this in his in his code, and he was so mad at me. He was like, it's one month into production, and you're writing hacks in the game. Slow it down, brother. Don't. It's not time for hacks. But it's always time for hacks, as far as I'm concerned. It's always, you know what? That's our next T-shirt or wallpaper. It's always time for hacks, Tony Garcia. It's always time. That's right. Wow, is that the end of this level already? That was the end of uh, Florana. Wow. I guess that means that we're done with the episode. I guess that is what it means. That's sad. So I'm sorry to go, but well, there'll be another episode. Oh, ideally. Oh my God. When? Uh, well, who knows? When it when it's out there, though, people will be excited. I hope it's soon. So, for Rash and Clank, uh, up your arsenal, developer commentary, I'm Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout, and, we'll, and we, we will see you next time. Yes, we will. Alright, uh, I'm going to s finish recording this cutscene, but, uh, stop the audio. With a Mavic's Fireball Pro controller, VR headset, and a Zero-G dance pad attachment. Will you marry me? Well, you've obviously had an exhausting trip. Uh, why don't you stop by your quarters? We prepared a custom living area for Quark, so he won't get in your way. Come meet me on the bridge when you're ready.